You're listening to the Mid-Career GPS Podcast, episode 104. You have probably heard people talk to you about setting boundaries. And you've probably sat there and wondered, what are they? How do I do that? Is it really important? Well, I'm here to tell you today that setting boundaries or what I call setting ground rules, it's not tricky. Enforcing them can be. Throughout my leadership journey, I have learned that the power of setting boundaries, or again, what I call ground rules, is important. See, for me, once the ground rules are set and agreed upon, everyone knows how to play. But what are the ground rules for you and your career? What's non-negotiable? And where are you willing to give in a little? In this episode, you will learn precisely what a ground rule is how to create them, how best to get buy-in from your direct reports, your colleagues, and your bosses, and when it's time to reevaluate or renegotiate those ground rules. This is the Mid-Career GPS Podcast, and I'm your host, John Narrell. I help mid-career professionals who are feeling undervalued and underutilized show up to find a job they love or love the job they have using my proven four-step formula. It's time to start building your mid-career GPS, so let's get started. Question. Are you in my private Facebook group? If not, I want to know why. Right now, we're all feeling the pressures of this roller coaster economy, and you may not have the money right now to pay for coaching, but you're still looking for some kind of support. As you're navigating your career journey and trying to figure out whatever is next, this podcast is certainly one way to help you, but I've got another way, and that is why I created this private Facebook group called Your Mid-Career GPS. Here, you're going to join a community of like-minded professionals who, like you, are simply trying to just figure out whatever is next. For example, last week, we had a conversation about starting up a networking conversation and how do you build that relationship with someone you don't even know, but they may end up being a great connection for you and vice versa. That's what we're here for. We would love to have you join the group so you can learn and we can learn from you as well. So what are you waiting for? Go to Facebook and search for your mid-career GPS, answer the membership questions, and I will see you in the group soon. Here's why I'm telling you about my Facebook group again in this episode. When you go to join, I have a series of rules that you wanting to be a member of the group must agree to in order to get admitted into the group. Now, Facebook has this set up in part to help me manage and run my group the way I want. But the other reason why I do this is that it's important for me to provide a safe space for everyone who is in that group. Now, on a business side, I do use the group to cultivate relationships with my members. Some of them become clients, some don't. But one of the things that I have clearly set up is that you cannot come into my group and sell to them. And if I find out that you're doing it, I kick you out. <laughs> it's as simple as that, right? You agree to the rules. We know how to play. So for example, one of the rules of my group says you are here to learn, improve, grow, and stretch about issues related to your career path and how you show up. You are not in this group to sell, pitch, or offer services to other group members. When you come into my group, you read the rules and you agree to them. That means that you and I have an agreement or an understanding about how you are supposed to play in that group. If you come in and you disrespect that or any of the other rules, I kick you out. It's as simple as that. I am so clear about my ground rules for my group that if you don't like it, I don't care. This is non-negotiable for me. You don't get in if you don't agree to the rules. And here's the best part. 
everyone adheres to that and the rules and they all play the same way. Currently, I am the only group administrator and I approve every person into my group. I take time to follow up with people who are coming into the group shortly after they come in, usually about a month or so afterwards. And let's not mistake this. I have had people DM me and push back and say that they don't feel like they should have to agree to the rules. Guess what I tell them? Thanks for letting me know. I hold very true to these rules. If you want in, you have to agree to them. Now, Usually someone like that's not going to agree, and that's fine. But once you create the ground rules, then your task is to enforce them. And some people can understandably have a little bit of a difficult time or a struggle when it's like, oh, I set these norms for my team meeting and, you know, somebody broke them and it was really kind of an awkward conversation. Yes. You're going to get better at that as time goes on. But the idea, whether you call them boundaries, norms, ground rules, whatever you want, once you set them up, everyone then knows how to play. And when everyone knows how to play and there's an agreement upon it, when somebody breaks the rules, you now have an avenue to go back and have a conversation with them about why they did it what happened, and what are the next steps. So setting ground rules is one of my show up six strategies. And today's topic falls into that fourth stage of building your mid-career GPS, the show up stage. Now, here are a few examples where ground rules are effective. Prioritizing your family over your work. Making your health a priority. Taking your lunch to work and preparing a healthy lunch for yourself every day or not sitting at your desk while you're eating your lunch, creating norms for your team meetings, honoring your one-on-one check-in meetings with your boss and or your direct reports. Another ground rule is how quickly does it take you to respond to emails, whether you work or not on vacation, speaking confidently when you're presenting, asking for a raise during your next performance appraisal, And knowing when you aren't going to compromise anymore and decide to create an exit strategy. There are an infinite number of ground rules you can set. As I go through each of these, though, today, what I want you to keep in mind is the goal is to be very clean and very clear about what the ground rule is, why it's important to you and how you are going to show up when presented in a situation where you have to honor that ground rule. So let's take the first one, prioritizing family over your work. These would be things like saying, I'm not going to miss my kids' games, or I'm going to make sure that I am there for dinner every night, except when I'm on work travel. And another ground rule might be detaching from devices at dinner. If you're a parent or a guardian and you're raising your family, you know you do not want to miss time with your kids. But you have an obligation with your job to do that job well, to bring in your salary, to take care of the family, to honor the responsibilities that you have. And this isn't about putting pressure on you that you have to do everything. It's not like that at all. But you get to set the ground rules for what those look like. A ground rule like this may be something like, no matter how busy I am, I am always going to make it a point to sit down with my kids at dinner. And when I'm on work travel, I'm always going to make it a point to call in or video or FaceTime with them to say goodnight and I love you. When you set that ground rule, then you know how to play. So when your boss or someone on your team schedules a meeting for you right during the dinner hour, sorry, I can't make that meeting. When can we reschedule? 
when you set that ground rule, you know how to play. For example, making your health a priority. How are you taking time for yourself during your workday? Is it a five-minute stretch break? Do you make it a point to go to the gym or work out at home? If your health is a priority, and we all know it should be, it can also be very difficult to put yourself first in situations where you know if you just took care of this or you did this one thing, it would just make it a little bit easier and I'll get to my workout later. Again, setting a ground rule for what's important to you, how do you do that? If you're someone who is actively working at advancing your career and you're going to school, maybe you're working on your MBA, you're getting another certification or another degree, whatever that is, you're like, oh, all right, well, I got to get this done. I got to get this done. And the next thing you know, you're not feeling really great about yourself. Trust me, I have been there on this. This is a constant struggle for me. And so taking that time to make your health a priority allows you to be there for everybody else. So what's the ground rule you're setting for yourself and your health? How about this one? Taking your lunch to work or preparing a healthy lunch for yourself every day and not eating in front of your computer answering emails. Th this one, this one rings true for a lot, a lot of my clients. And it has also rung true practically in every single place where I have worked. This is part of our culture where we just go, 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 go all the time. And people will like, look and be like, are you kidding me? You don't have time to chew your food. You just kind of swallowed that burger whole or you devoured that salad whole. There's lots of research on mindful eating or just simply being mindful in the tasks that you're doing. But I, I will ask my clients, I'm like, do you take lunch? Well, most days. Oh, okay, so we're going to set a ground rule right now. You're going to take lunch every day. And you're going to step away from your device. And if you're working from home, you can sit at the table. You can read a book, whatever you want to do but you are stepping away from your work computer, you are entitled to a lunch and a break. Simple. We're going to set that ground rule. You're worth it. Ground rules are not only for your, your, the team and the people you work with, they're also for yourself. This is one that I'm really excited to talk to you about today because it has been such a huge part of my work as I was going through my career and advancing and working with teams and building teams. And that is about creating norms for your team meetings. First thing I want you to ask yourself is, do you have established and agreed upon norms for your team meeting? This is not, well, we all know how to act. No, you have a series of norms that you share at the beginning of your meetings. You let everybody new to your team know what those meetings are. And there is group accountability around enforcing and honoring those norms. This was something that when I learned how to do it, I was immediately amazed at how important they are. As a school teacher, I set norms all the time. There were expectations that my students knew when they came into the class, what they were supposed to do, how they were supposed to behave in the class and how they were supposed to leave, right? I never stopped doing them when I started leading teams. I began every team meeting with a set of ground rules that we as a team had created and agreed upon. And my favorite one came from when I was working with uh, District of Columbia Public Schools I managed a team of 21 instructional coaches across 13 middle schools. And that ground rule was challenge ideas and not people. Challenge ideas and not people. And we did a lot of work around exactly what that meant. And what that meant was if you disagreed with somebody, you didn't eye roll, you didn't call them stupid. 
You didn't say that idea was ridiculous. What you said was, help me understand that. Let me know what you mean by that. And there would be some healthy and at times critical and constructive dialogue around whatever idea that we were talking about, but you never went and attacked the person. You never called them out and you said, hey, Gladys, you're stupid for bringing that up. We never did that. I still use that norm today. I I just did a half-day workshop for a small sales team, and that was one of the norms that we had created. I brought into the room and I said, can we agree to this today? Everybody was on board. Focus on the meeting. And don't come to the meeting answering emails while we're in the meeting itself. This was another norm that I had set up because the reason why with the team that I had been working with at the time, one of the complaints was that the team meetings were just really long. And as I had observed and watched the team, there was a lot of distractions. People had their laptops open. They were checking emails. Now, obviously, this is pre-pandemic. We're sitting all in the conference room, right? Right. But in order for us to get things done and get it done as quickly as possible, that was one of the norms we had set up. And in addition to that norm, what we had also set up was you are part of a team. Therefore, you collectively respect the team. And doing work on a personal project or checking email while you are with the team is disrespectful to them. If you break the rule, you'll be asked to leave. It was not the first time I had ever asked someone to leave a meeting because they broke the rules and they didn't honor the norms. And when I asked them to leave, please understand that we had a conversation in my office afterward about exactly what was going on and how their behavior went against the norm that they had agreed to. See, when you have those norms set, you know how to play. And one of the things that also comes up is that you can make agreements with people above you, your boss, your leaders that you're working with. One of my favorites had to do with one-on-one check-in meetings. So think about where you work. You and your boss may have a weekly standing check-in meeting to go over what's going on with your work. Now, maybe it's weekly or bi-weekly or monthly, whatever that is. Those meetings are important. I had a boss who would cancel those meetings because she would be like, you're doing a great job. Don't worry about it. Everything's fine. We don't have to meet today. And finally, one day I said to her, I'm like, no, I actually do need to meet with you. And she was like, well, I, I, I rescheduled. Great. When can we find another time? And it's all great and wonderful when we're told we're doing great work. But I still wanted to have that time because there were things that I needed to ask about or learn about or get her decisions on things. And so when that happened, I set another ground rule. Hey, I understand that you're busy. When you need to cancel our check-in meeting and I need to talk to you, can I find additional time on your calendar to reschedule? And when I do, we're going to honor that meeting unless something really big comes up. And if it does, we're going to find another time to reschedule. Can we agree to that? She said, yes. And there were times when I did it. When I had my team of direct reports wherever I was working, I always respected those check-in meetings. And I would say to them, look, if for any reason I need to reschedule our check-in meeting and I don't send you a reschedule link within 24 hours with a new meeting invite, you can either A, remind me, or B, put some time on my calendar. I never wanted that time to be dismissed. And I would make an agreement with my direct reports on that. 
And when I did have to cancel that meeting, obviously the first thing I wanted to do was find time to reschedule, but you can't always do that in the moment. Sometimes calendars are tricky. So in that respect, I wanted them to follow up because they knew how to play. When you set ground rules, there's no walking on eggshells. You know exactly how to act because of it. Another ground rule you might set for yourself is how quickly it takes you to respond to emails. I try to adhere to a 24-hour or one business day time frame. Sometimes stuff slips, but that's how I operate. I don't want to just open the email, read it, and not respond to it. Another one would be whether or not you work on vacation. This is a hard one for us. This is a hard one for us. One, as we're growing our careers. Two, as we're working toward whatever that next advancement's going to be. But here's the underlying thing. For a lot of people, the worry here is that we don't want to be caught missing something. We missed an important email. We missed a message from a client. You get to decide what work looks like for you on vacation. I'm not going to tell you one way or the other, because in all honesty, right now, as I'm growing this business and this business is getting bigger and bigger, I go away. It kind of eases my mind if I take 15 or 20 minutes to answer an email or check in on something, and then I can go about the rest of my day. I'm not saying that's right or wrong. I'm just saying that's what works for me and that's what's healthy for me at this point. What's that look like for you? What is the ground rule you're setting for yourself on this? Another ground rule you may set for yourself is that whenever I'm speaking in a meeting, be it contributing to the conversation, or I am leading a part of the meeting, I will always speak confidently and competently when speaking in front of others. That is a big part of your executive presence, your leadership voice, how you show up in that whenever I have the mic or whenever I have the meeting or I am called upon, I will always add value to that conversation. One of the things, and it's a common theme that when my clients start coming to me, we will have this conversation around compensation. They want to raise, they want their promotion. They feel like they should be earning X amount of dollars. And it's one thing to feel about it. It's another thing to say it. So we do some work around what it means for them to communicate their value and clearly and cleanly communicate what they believe that is worth. So one of the ground rules is when it comes time for me to ask for that raise, I'm not going to waver in my value. I will always stand strong in my value. We work through what that looks like. And one of the biggest ground rules, it is one that I set very, very strongly in my mid-career. It was this. When I know that I am undervalued and underutilized, and I have had all of the conversations I have needed to confirm that belief I will create an exit strategy. Imagine that. That the ground rule you set for yourself is you are valuable, you are worth it, you are smart, you are intelligent, and you provide quality wherever you go. And if someone doesn't recognize that, If someone doesn't believe in the value you get to contribute every day, you have the power to create that exit strategy in whatever shape or form it looks like. To be clear, that does not mean you walk into the office and you give an ultimatum 
and you immediately quit if they don't give it to you. Setting ground rules does not mean we get to be irrational, especially right now in this day and age. But if you're unhappy, you're feeling unsatisfied, if you know you're being undervalued and underutilized, then it is time to start building a mid-career GPS and figure out that exit strategy toward whatever is next. Because how would you show up if your value is non-negotiable? That was one of the ground rules I set for myself as well. How would I show up if I knew my value was non-negotiable? Now, as the person in charge of your ground rules, the ones that only impact you or, or rather are directly related to you, you can change them anytime you want. But as a team leader, as someone who oversees a group or has direct reports that collectively you have created a series or set of ground rules, you cannot change them unless everyone agrees to them. Here's what I mean by that. You have worked with your team to establish a set of norms for what your work looks like and what your work looks like when you come to a meeting. If you think that one of those ground rules no longer serves the group, you cannot arbitrarily remove it or change it without seeking the collective input and agreement from the group that initially made them. You are not a dictator in this regard. You cannot change group rules at will without that conversation. That is how, if you do that, that is how you break down trust and rapport with your team. So what might that look like? Well, I always found it to be particularly helpful that every six months you went back and revisited those ground rules. Hey, we haven't had a chance to go back and just take a look at these ground rules. It's been six months. Let's just take a quick look at these. Are there any things we want to add or change? That's all. And if you have a thought about something, then bring it up to the group because you and the group created it. That's all. Team ground rules or team norms are powerful, powerful things because when you set them, you know how to play. And when you know how to play, you never have to walk on eggshells because everyone's agreed to them. As I'm wrapping up, I want to go back to one thing, just, just to clarify something. First part is going to save me a lot on the editing piece because <laughs> I'm recording this uh, two days before it's going to drop. So we're just going to go ahead and go back. I'm going to, I'm going to take uh, podcaster host privileges here. Remember when I said about, you know, the first thing about not missing your kids' games and such like that? That is something that's important to you. You will absolutely need to build that agreement or that ground rule with your boss, right? As you're talking to them, you may say something like, look, my kid's playing ball. It's really important for me to be there. So I just want to make an agreement with you that I need to leave work at three o'clock or 3.30 on game days and I'll let you know when they are. And here's how I'm going to make up that time. And then you ask the question, can we agree to that? When they say yes, you have an agreement on the ground rule. If they have a concern or a reservation, they will communicate that to you. And at that point, you'll work that out. Then you will come to an agreement on what exactly that ground rule looks like. Let the ground rules be a way for you to engage and build relationships with people at all levels within your organization or your life. I would be remiss to say here that in my relationship, we have certain ground rules. It's just the way it is, right? And it just allows us to know where the boundaries and where the respect is in our relationships. That's a powerful thing 
That's why setting ground rules is so important. And I'm glad I had the opportunity to offer that to you today. So here is your challenge. I want you to think of one ground rule that you would like to implement either personally or professionally. And whatever that ground rule is, I want you to honor that ground rule and just focus on that for 30 days. How has that ground rule helped you? Where has it stressed you out? Where has it made your work life or your personal life a little bit easier? I want you to walk away from this episode and think about why that ground rule is important to you, why you want to establish it, and how it's going to help you move forward as you build your mid-career GPS. So until next time, my friends, remember this. We build our mid-career GPSs one mile or one step at a time, and how we show up matters. Make it a great rest of your day. If you enjoyed today's show and don't want to miss an episode, follow on Apple Podcasts or wherever you usually listen, and I'd appreciate it if you would leave a rating and review. Visit johnnarrell.com to download your free copy of the 55-Minute Career Transition Jumpstart to help you start building your mid-career GPS. And don't forget to connect with me on LinkedIn and follow me on social at John Narrell Coaching. Thanks for listening. I'll see you next time.